Well, we've had a great day together. We've talked about big data. We've talked about drug delivery, venture capital, intraocular pressure monitoring, digital health. This afternoon, we've talked about new drugs and new devices. And now, we need someone to put it all together for us, <laughs> give us some perspective, and to leave with some wisdom. And so, it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Jack Chaffee, Chairman at Columbia. Dr. Chaffee. Thank you. Yeah, I get to put the bow on all of this. You know, uh, a few minutes ago, we heard uh, Jane Rady from uh, Abbott Medical say that uh, we're at a tipping point. And frankly, I think this meeting's at a tipping point. And so, it was with great enthusiasm when uh, Andy and uh, Adrian asked me to do this, and I got to give the introductory uh, talk at the uh, the first one of these uh, three years ago, and here are the the four things that I, I talked about then. What's shaping glaucoma? And I'll I'll get I'll come back to that in one second, but then we talked a bit about health care reform and financing. A lot of what we've heard now, and and honestly, over the last three years, this has taken uh, hold of us all. Uh, not only financing from a, a venture perspective, but uh, just healthcare uh, reform financing uh, and uh, how it affects each one of us in our daily lives. Talked about neuro novel therapeutics, and boy, what, what an amazing transition in a three year period where we could barely talk about drug delivery at that point and just ideas were out there, and now we have eight, nine, ten companies uh, presenting in one panel. And then we talked a little bit about personalized uh, medicine, and I'm going to come back to that point in a couple minutes. So it's hard to put a talk together when you don't know what everybody's going to say uh, today. Uh, but the one thing that I knew that I could answer right off the bat in slides when asked the question, what is shaping uh, the future of glaucoma care, and I'd say it's glaucoma 360. This is a very unique meeting. And I stole this from a document that uh, was developed uh, back in uh, 2011 uh, that was circulated as this uh, meeting was being formulated. And I'll just read you the first line. New Horizons is a high-level forum gathering key opinion leaders in clinical care, breakthrough research, pharmaceutical and medical device enterprise, and savvy startups. I like the savvy word. That's an Adrian. Uh, all intent on transforming new ideas into new hope in a worldwide battle to beat the threat of blindness from glaucoma. And they've done that. They, they've put that together, and the interaction that you saw today was almost seamless. And it wasn't like people walked out because they said, oh, I'm not interested in that topic, because it was so interwoven, uh, whether it be venture uh, for devices or venture uh, for uh, medications, whether it be FDA talking to uh, people in industry or industry talking to uh, clinicians. So it really has, has met that goal that they set out for themselves uh, four or five years ago. So then I was given this list and uh, uh, asked to say something about a, a summary. And I, I'm going to pull out just a few key points and I'll, I'll highlight them. And I'd urge you if you do nothing else that you go back and you, you look through Paul Lee's intro uh, keynote today. It was a perfect summary. He talked about future states, but he also talked about innovation and the shifting demographics that we're all uh, facing in our practice. He talked about workforce uh, changes. And then he, he led, and I actually haven't seen the document, the Robert Wood Johnson initiative that he talked about, but I love sort of the, the two bookends. Healthcare, if you can get it. The people really struggling out there, and, and for those that are clinicians, we know they exist every day uh, in our lives and big data, big gains. The idea that uh, we can get a handle on this and we can actually help people. And, and he listed a, a set of must-dos. And I think what we heard all day then was the must-dos. What we have to do, how we have to figure out regulatory guidance guidelines, how we have to figure out how to fund a, a new startup. There's a lot of must-dos. And so revisit uh, Paul's talk. We then went into drug delivery, and as I said, eight or nine companies talking about drug delivery in the glaucoma space in, in one morning uh, is incredible. You know, and I think there were a few themes that came out of that. One was the idea of slow release drug delivery is possible now. And it, it wasn't a few years ago. You know, we all injected something under the conjunctiva and hoped it worked, and it didn't. 
It took smarter people figuring out multiple platforms, and you saw many, many biodegradable uh, wafer platforms this morning, intraocular, extraocular, uh, that they went through. Many already in phase two, and healthfully in the phase two, and some just uh, uh, venturing into phase three. That's pretty cool, over a three-year period to get to that point. The other thing that I thought came out of that was sort of this arrival, and it's been discussed multiple times, what's the right window? Three months, six months, 12 months, what's long enough? And what's minimally invasive enough in drug delivery? And six months, I, I think, sort of became the, uh, the battle cry. But the stability of release, not having the big peaks and troughs, uh, really that, that industry is starting to mature very quickly. We then had the, the nice pleasure of hearing from Catalyst for the Cure. And that's a project, and I, I said it last night at the gala, realize that, that right now, uh, Glaucoma Research Foundation has funded about 125 pilot grants. They've given away about $35 million in research support over time. And you heard about the Catalyst for the Cure and this idea about biomarkers. How relevant, because you just heard uh, FDA folks say, well, well, tell us, if you want a biomarker, if you want something that's gonna predict the future, show us that it predicts the future, and that's what the catalyst is uh, aiming for. And Andy Huberman uh, did a great job sort of telling what they have done, the, the great progress, but also the great promise. We then moved on to IOP monitoring, diagnostics, and digital health. And uh, Bob Weinreb talked about uh, Topol's book, and he said, uh, in the future, we will react to streams of data. I think we're already reacting to streams of data, right? And it makes me fearful, you know, an average glaucoma person can have two, three, five, seven, ten thousand glaucoma patients out there in their practice. And can you imagine your, your uh, smartphone lighting up every time somebody has a pressure spike? We're going to have to figure out how to handle that. And we heard some of that discussion uh, today uh, about data management. We're going to need help there. And, and other industries have done this, obviously. They've figured out how to take these streams of data and make them interpretable. We also heard about the IRIS registry and the numbers again, 6,000 MDs, 20 million individual visits, 7 million individual patients in that already in, in about a year. That's pretty amazing. They've got big hurdles to overcome and it's a big investment uh, on the Academy's part, but it's, uh, you know, worth uh, looking into. We have to manage our data, but we first have to collect it. Funding and venture capital. And, uh, you know, that interaction is like nothing else. It's like nothing else in our, our, our meetings, and it's a, a perfect discussion. And, and I love to hear, you know, four or five years ago, they were sort of a downtrodden group. They weren't, they weren't as happy as they were today. But today they were talking about unmet needs, in a huge clinical space. There was a lot of enthusiasm ar around that. And, but they, they, stretched a few, or they stressed a few things. They said, don't forget about the rest of the world. You know, we talked only about here, but this is a, a blinding disease worldwide. And uh, unfortunately, we don't deliver care very well uh, elsewhere. But then they talked about capital efficiency business plans and this idea of milestones. And some of you may not know, but uh, that, uh, the NIH actually has started a, a therapeutic blueprint uh, process with milestone driven, much uh, like the venture capital uh, folks were talking about this morning. So it gives you some capital to get things done, but you got to meet every uh, three to six months and, and hit a milestone or you don't continue to get funded. So those ideas actually, it's nice to see that they're in the private space as well as the public. We then flipped over in the afternoon to pharmaceuticals, and, and again, you know, a smaller space in terms of, uh, you know, what's new on the horizon, but two pretty exciting things. Rokinase, finally going through its uh, uh, phase three uh, trials. Uh, this has been a long time coming with a, a potential introduction in 17, maybe 18, uh, so a year or two as they, they unlock in uh, Q2 of this year. Uh, their big data. Uh, this is an exciting time and uh, uh, especially poignant uh, with the, the passing of uh, David earlier this year. And then Valiant talked about uh, something that again has been a long time coming, uh, the NO uh, donating uh, compounds and combination products and their, their data likewise looked uh, 
pretty exciting and maybe a little bit ahead of the rokinase in uh, release potential in 16 or 17. Skipping over to devices, again, talk about something that's matured in a very short period of time. Uh, and uh, Melvina uh, and Koldev actually deserve a lot of credit around creating some sense to that space. Uh, it's an Im important advance to uh, define what you're talking about in this space. But actually, the device discussion uh, I like to MIGS Plus, and there were even blub, blebs, God forbid, talked about uh, as an alternative uh, today. But there were nine ideas floated to you. And Tom Samuelson at the beginning, you know, broke it into canal surgeries and superciliary surgeries, transcleral and so on. But really, I think what you should have taken away from that is that the breadth of options uh, has spread out immensely in a very short period of time. So a lot of people, including myself, we were somewhat discouraged by the early MIGS uh, results because we thought they, they weren't doing enough or weren't doing enough for our patients. But now that's expanded. And really, I think it's uh, somebody brought up uh, during the discussion that it's taken multi-generational approaches to get that done. So it didn't just happen on the first time. The first uh, little tube that somebody stuck in, either ab interno or ab externo, didn't meet what we were hoping it would meet. But you know, six, seven, eight, nine uh, generations of some of these implants, and finally, it looks like they're right there, they're right on the cusp, and they'll they'll do it in a lot of ways, and they'll cover the entire spectrum of glaucoma, uh, not just early disease or the huge space of uh, minimal disease, but so uh, also refractory glaucomas. And then we close with uh, you know what is probably encouraging to some, maybe discouraging to others, but. The FDA has hurdles in place for, for a lot of reasons, the, the main one of which is uh, patient safety. So, you know, it is a push-pull, and, and we can complain about it, but uh, the only thing worse than not having these things is hurting people. And having spent uh, several years on the FDA uh, medical panel, I know that it's right there at the forefront. That's what they're about. They want to give us guidance, you know, this expeditious review, expeditious help, that's great. Being able to call uh, both Wiley and Melvina is a big deal. And you really can. You can have discussions with them, unlike 20 years ago, and, and get guidance. These guidelines are, are key. And they're, they're not meant to be a, a cookbook of how to get something approved. They're, they're meant to help you think through the process. I was uh, especially uh, amazed that uh, Melvina has two people that will hold your hand which I thought was sort of nice. It's like a counseling session. So let me close with a, a couple thoughts. One is we didn't hear much about personalized medicine. It's the thing that I said was way out uh, three or four years ago. And I, I want to tell you that I think in the next couple years, this meeting, we're going to be talking about this. And that is the idea that we can go away from trial and error medicine, where we say, let's try this drug, and maybe it will work in Sally, but maybe not. But maybe we could know something about Sally. Maybe we could know something uh, about her genome, uh, about what receptors she has in her eyes. And maybe we could actually individualize therapy. And I want to say that I think we're there. And I'll give you this. Uh, David Goldstein, who some of you may know, um, actually from Duke, uh, a fairly famed uh, genomist uh, guy, just uh, came to Columbia to start the Institute of Genomic Medicine. And he said at a meeting a few weeks ago uh, with my faculty that you have an interesting patient, you don't know what's going on, send me, s send me their blood. We'll, we'll do a whole genome screen for free, for free. And we'll get it back to you within two weeks. It's crazy, right? It's crazy talk, but I think that's the generation that we're living in right now. So I think some of this medical care and the responders or the non-responders are going to go by the board in the, the coming years. And I, I would bet when we come back here in three or four years, this precision medicine or personalized medicine, genomic medicine, whatever you want to call it, is going to take hold pretty quickly. So what's shaping uh, glaucoma care? I think glaucoma 360 is. And 
Uh, I'm proud to say that uh, for the last few years, uh, after the first one of these meetings, I, uh, I got uh, quoted on a website, which usually getting quoted on a website is not a good thing. Um, on this website, I got quoted as saying, this is the glaucoma meeting to attend, and I, I firmly believe that. Uh, so kudos to the Glaucoma Research Foundation and Tom Bruner uh, and company, but, but really to uh, Adrian, uh, Andy, you guys have done an amazing job at putting a very complex uh, package together that's benefited our industry. Thank you very much.